Authorities in Kaufman County, Texas, believe their own justice of the peace is a triple murderer. Eric Williams would stop at nothing until he got his revenge. Cops claim Williams got his revenge by killing District Attorney Mike McClelland, his wife Cynthia, and Assistant DA Mark Hassey after they prosecuted and convicted him of stealing $600 worth of computer monitors. That conviction cost Williams his judgeship. Pretty much lost everything over it. The not so peaceful former justice is the prime suspect, but cops say they have no evidence tying him to the murders. And Eric Williams is not talking to police, but he is talking to the press. First, I want to say that uh, my deepest condolences go out to the McClellan family and all the people at the courthouse, most of which I know. Uh, I've cooperated with law enforcement. I certainly wish them the best in bringing justice for this uh, just incredibly egregious act. Then, in a bizarre turn of events, Williams fires his attorneys and says he will talk to investigators. He thought he was smarter than his lawyers. And it's the age old added, you know, a lawyer that represents himself as a fool for a client. At that point, uh, the Texas Ranger and one, somebody from the high up in the Sheriff's Department went over and knocked on Eric's door. To their surprise, Williams invites them inside. The investigators record the conversation. Hey, Eric, I appreciate it. Thank you, Thank you very much. They enter with caution. After all, they consider Eric to be a cold-blooded killer with a chip on his shoulder the size of Texas against Kaufman County law enforcement. Do you still have any ammo or anything? Last year, um, the only ammo I would have would be for that. Uh, when Williams was found guilty of stealing those computer monitors, he became a convicted felon. He wasn't allowed to have firearms. During the recorded conversation, Eric tells authorities he sold all of his 16 guns except one. But when investigators move into the next room, they discover parts of guns everywhere. Hey, Eric, I'm just curious. You're selling all your guns. Why didn't you say you're spotting and stuff? You got to do everything yet, I guess. Then they find something else. Here, what is that? Is this a taser or something? It's not a taser, it's a heat seeker, a tool with a built-in laser used to detect heat sources. It's normally used for hunting game at night, but investigators think Eric planned to use it to hunt humans, or he already did. District Attorney Mike McClelland and his wife were gunned down before dawn. Investigators have seen enough. They had enough evidence to get a search warrant, and that was the first big break. The very next day, Kaufman County investigators return and they bring back up the FBI and they go through every square inch of Williams' home. And that's when they found a lot of the really damaging information. Inside a filing cabinet, investigators discover the title to a white Crown Victoria vehicle in Eric's name. The same type of car spotted in the McClellan's neighborhood around the time of the murders. It had been purchased just weeks before, and that's not all. The smoking gun was he had actually logged on to a Crime Stopper site and claimed credit for the murders. Now, obviously, he did this anonymously, but when we conducted a search of his house, he had written down the password for the login to Crime Stoppers. And each tipster gets a unique password, and when cops cross-check that code, it links directly back to those taunting emails from the killer. So we knew instantly that Eric Williams was the person that had been taunting us through the Crime Stoppers tip line. Wow, it's the little things. It's the little things that always get them. Agents arrest Williams for making deadly threats, but there's still not enough evidence to charge him with the murders. And while they found the title to that mysterious white crown Vic, they still can't locate the car. The investigators knew they were looking for the car. They thought that he had things stashed somewhere. And one of the places they thought of was a storage unit, but uh, they just didn't know where it was. And in this small town, Fed searching the home of the former justice of the peace becomes the lead story all over the news. That prompts one viewer to call police. He's a friend of Eric's. After he saw media coverage, 
I think the friend knew by that point that we were on to Eric Williams, and the friend thought he better tell us what he knew. Before he got embroiled in the whole triple murder. That's exactly right. Eric's friend tells police about a secret storage unit that he rented in his name for the former Justice of the Peace. Kaufman officials get a second search warrant and race to the address of the storage unit. Once the door was raised, we found a veritable treasure trove of evidence, including the White Crown Victoria. The storage locker I've heard referred to as Eric Williams' Little House of Horrors. It was packed with ammunition, different types of guns. Over 70 guns are recovered, from handguns to assault rifles and everything in between. It was amazing what they found inside. Such as? Oh, they found napalm. They found jars of napalm. Uh, they found a crossbow with arrows. They found what looked like a Molotov cocktail that they think that he might have been pulling together to burn up the car when he was done with it. But what about that other getaway car used during the murder of prosecutor Mark Hassey? It was described as a brown or silver sedan. Well, turns out investigators find receipts that show Eric recently purchased a silver Mercury Sable. He thought it was nondescript and no one would notice it. And it had also been in the storage unit, but broke down in the parking lot where it was towed away. We had a mountain of evidence. And that mountain is about to come crashing down on Eric Williams. He's arrested for capital murder in the shooting deaths of Assistant DA Mark Hassey, District Attorney Mike McClelland, and his wife Cynthia. But turns out this former judge, hell-bent on revenge, wasn't killing alone. He had some help. When Kim Williams came out of the holdover to testify against her husband, you could have heard a pin drop in the courtroom. Coming up. You were murdered. Yes. The killing couple without remorse. They had a cookout and ate very expensive steaks and celebrated what they had just done. But now Eric's wife is taking aim at him. And that would be including things like this alleged hit list. We had over 70 weapons uh, that came into evidence to show what type of person Eric Williams really was.